Alrighty. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the take recorder. Um, and so the uh, idea of the take recorder is how we record um, various things in the game or in Unreal that we change as it's playing, such as our track camera. Um, but this can be anything. If you hook a you know, an object to move up, move around with an Xbox controller, your mocap suit running live into Unreal, all those sort of things can go through the take recorder to be recorded. Um, now, if you have a question uh, about how to use this that uh, I don't answer in this video, um, be sure to drop it in the comments, um, as if I get enough of them, I'll probably make a follow-up answering them all. Otherwise, um, I will definitely try my best to answer them sort of just typing it out. Um, so we're using our virtual production setup uh, with the track camera, um, with the Oculus today. Um, but this will work with anything. Um, the only thing you need to keep in mind is that uh, there um, is a slight difference when you're using the virtual reality virtual camera one, but I'll mention that when we get to that. Um, if you don't have the take recorder, um, first of all, it's a plugin uh, under virtual production. Where is it? There it is. Um, so make sure it's enabled there. Um, if you can't see it in the window, uh, under window cinematics, it's here. Take recorder. Make sure that's enabled. I've just dragged it over here. You can put it wherever the hell you like. Um, Alright, so by default, the take recorder will create a new sequence to record into, um, as you can see here, um, which this is fine if you want that, but uh, if you have a sequence that already has some animation in it, like here, I've got just a chair moving, uh, if you want to use that one instead with the take recorder, all you have to do is you have to right click that sequence and click open in take recorder, uh, and now the take recorder will use that sequence. Alrighty, so the, the take recorder works a lot like the sequence system. Uh, you can you add sources over here, um, and we can add a lot of different things, um, including another sequence um, that isn't in this sequence, but we're not going to do that. Um, so what we want to do for this example is we're going to add our track camera onto it to track. Um, uh, but you know, you add the um, actors, you know, if the mocap suit, you can add microphones if you want to record audio from a uh, your computer input directly into Unreal, which I haven't tried yet, but I'm very keen to do so. Um, so in the case of the VR headset or the virtual reality virtual camera, um, we, we actually have the camera and the virtual reality head split set headset split into two, um, you will have to add both of those to the tape recorder to get it working correctly. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. <clears throat> so uh, when we add an object, as you can see here, we have 142 ob uh, properties for components. If we click on it, we can actually, here we can choose what we do and don't want to track in the tape recorder. Um, and then at the very bottom we have the tape recorder settings um, and we have remove redundant tracks, which is ticked by default. Um, now the problem, what that'll do is remove all of these recording tracks that don't actually change over the duration of our uh, take. Which sounds smart, but uh, the problem is certain things that aren't going to change, such as our focus, uh, it'll get rid of it'll get rid of that track, and we can't change it at a later date, which we obviously will want to. Uh, so what we do is uh, we untick remove redundant tracks, but the problem is that's going to give us 142 things to try and scroll through which is a bit excessive so um, what we're going to do is we're going to untick everything by just ticking at the very top here uh, and we're only going to track what we uh, need so we're pre-removing the redundant tracks uh, so what we need is we need the spawn and transform of everything uh, transform transform and transform so spawn obviously says whether or not this object has been spawned into the world uh, and we need the transform of everything because if you remember from our setup at least from this example um, everything sort of takes its transform or inherits part of its transform from the thing above so the camera's transform will be our uh, offset that we set up um, the cube is going to be the transform of the controller, the arrow is going to be the transform if we move it around with the thumbstick, and so all, of the, and then the, just the general transform is where we've placed it in the world. So all of these are necessary. The other things we want to do on this Cineon camera is tick what we want to change uh, later. Um, 
So I'm going to tick the focus settings, the focal length, and the aperture. And uh, that is everything. Like, the film back settings, you may want to change, but uh, we don't necessarily want to keyframe them, so we don't have to track the keyframe for it. Uh, same with things like the post-processing settings and what have you. You know, only tick what you want to change and possibly keyframe. You know, so obviously we want to keyframe the focus settings. We may want to change, possibly keyframe the focal length. Same with the aperture. Alrighty, so after those are done, your record button should go red as it's ready to record. Um, I'm going to name this um, tutorial uh, scene one. Um, make sure under your slate that uh, you don't have invalid characters because this is also uh, down here is the file save or the take recorder directory. Um, so if you put a space in here, even though the take recorder doesn't have a problem with it, uh, entering it, you'll see it goes blank because it's an invalid path. Uh, now your take number will automatically go up every time you uh, click start and stop a take as well. That's something to remember. Um, so with our virtual camera set up, I haven't missed anything on my notes. Um, with our virtual camera set up, we've, automatic, we've already set it up. So when I hit the B button on the Oculus controller, it'll automatically start the take. So all we have to do is make sure that the take recorder panel is open. Uh, one thing to remember is if you've got a very big scene and lots of things being tracked and stuff, um, this can hit your uh, wherever the project is stored pretty hard. Um, and I found I had a big project was just stored on a hard drive in my PC. Uh, and every time I hit record, uh, it would the engine would freeze for about 20 seconds before it actually started recording. Um, so if once I moved it to my NVMe SSD, it was blazing fast and hit record, it immediately recorded. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, this project is on an SSD, so uh, a small project like this won't matter anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit play. Um, I might just fall down. All right, we're gonna get our controller. I'm gonna go to a wide lens, uh, and then all I have to do is hit play. And when I, uh, sorry, hit record. And when I hit record, it'll automatically play through the sequence as well, as you'll see. Um, yeah. So if I hit record, oop, and we've got our magic moving chair. Just follow. When I'm done, I just hit the same button again on the controller and that'll stop it and as you can see down there it's saved it and so I can record as many of these as I want change lenses midway through and I can cycle back out of lenses you know you do go nuts with this really um, these takes do not take up much space um, I don't think actually I'm not 100% sure does it say in here? Okay, the takes may take up a bit of space. Um, I can't see why they take up too much space, but uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. Uh, so once you're done, you know, you're probably, well, I sort of spoiled that. Um, you're probably wondering how you look at these takes. Um, if you didn't follow along with what I just did. Um, so the f easiest way to look at the last one is just hit review last recording uh, in the take recorder. Obviously, as you can see, um, you, you know, you can jump straight into it, uh, and you can also, as the button suggests here, start a new recording using this take as the base. Um, but if you want to see all of them in the content browser, um, if you haven't got it already, it'll create a folder called cinematics and then takes and then by date. And then here we go. Tutorial scene one, two, and three. And we can just open these up like regular sequences, as you can see there, my chair. <laughs> So, uh, one thing you may notice is everything's grayed out. Like, and if I go into the camera track, uh, everything's grayed out, red, I can't do anything. Um, and so how do I change stuff? Well, that's just the lock button up here. We can just unlock it like that. And now we can add things, change things, we can change what uh, camera track sequence we're using. So if you got, you want to use the camera from one and the motion capture from another, you can do that. Uh, we can view here and this just works like a regular uh, sequence now. You can go through, you can keyframe all your values like you normally would. The only thing you may notice is, oh no, yeah, so the tracks, you can add tracks. Oh, my bad. Um, yeah, so just like that, obviously uh, you wanna add 
more tracks for uh, various things you can but yeah it's just a regular sequence now that can be rendered out can be you can just use it like a sequence awesome uh so uh in so like i said any questions i didn't answer about this hopefully that was everything it's pretty simple to use once you get your head around it if you want to see sort of i'll be going into exporting these sequences in the best quality possible as well as a uh, workflow i use for cinematic videos and stuff in unreal uh in a future tutorial which i'm probably going to be recording straight after this one so they'll be uh pretty close to each other so